guys how you doing hope you're all well so in this video it's an exciting one i have both my plc's as you can see both connected and they're not looped together they're both going off this way to a network switch and they talk to each other and i'll show you quickly how i did that which is pretty amazing to be honest with you so what i've done is i've got my normal program here running on this plc which is my water level sensor which if you haven't seen um i did a, my last video on that explained how this works basically. So I've got my water level sensor program running on this PLC. And what this PLC does is, it just waits to see when that e-stop is pressed. So if I hit that e-stop, you're gonna see right now, there are no inputs and outputs on, on this PLC. I press the e-stop, and you can see there, that output turns on, and then it's powering my buzzer on here. Which, ah, it's incredible, man. It's incredible. So I had a bunch of issues which I can I can explain through uh, quickly. So what happened was I set both these IPs the same and I couldn't change it. That was very difficult for me to change. And secondly, these seem to have different settings. So it has to do with like you set the operator mode in the settings, which I'll show you in a second. So there were a lot of issues getting this working, but it's simple to be honest with you. Once you know how to do it, it's quite simple. So I hit my e-stop and what happens here is that uh, you make like a fake tag to say on just make another output and then what you're doing is you're sending an output to here so what you do is you say okay e-stop is pressed and then when that e-stop is pressed then set an output on this plc and then that plc can see the output use it to trigger an input and then that triggers an output so you kind of jump a little bit which i'll show you in the code but it's simple it is really, really simple to do and once I solved my duplicate IP issue, it took me maybe half an hour to do, so quite cool. Hit e-stop, boom, and then you can see there, so that's just, and you can see, so my e-stop, the input for the e-stop is there. So the way that, what I did was someone in the comments, thank you very much for this as well, told me that obviously e-stop should be wired normally closed. That is to say that, you know, you've got a switch for the, for the button. Instead of having it that when you press the button, it closes, you want it so that the button is closed and then when you press it, it opens, right? That way, if the wire drops off, you know about it. Because what you don't want is that this is, the wire in there is broken or the wire somewhere here is broken and then someone goes to hit the e-stop and it ain't working because the wire is broken and that wire has been broken for a year and no one's noticed. So at least now, when it be normally closed, when the wire breaks, then your e-stop will go off and you'll know, oh, I've got an issue. My e-stop's not pressed, but it's telling me it's pressed, so... So yeah, so my input here for the e-stop is currently on. I press the e-stop, that input goes off because it's opened up and then that triggers and that, that sends an input into here and then that triggers an output. So the reason why it's not sending an input that you can see over there is because I'm using like a, a random input, like input 100. So yeah, let's jump into the code. All right, so if you look over here, I've got both my PLCs, they're both online. And so I've got PLC one, which is my 1211, my old one and PLC2, which is my 1214, my new one. And so you can see I've got them on the same network. So the same subnet, 10.8.31.1, 10.8.31.2. So to quickly just explain what happened with the IP addresses, I had them both set to the same and I couldn't figure out how to change them. So I did eventually realize that you can go to online diagnostics on a PLC, come down to functions on the left here, and then what you can do is you come and you say, okay, reset to factory settings. And instead of retain IP address, set it to delete the IP address and then reset it. And then what you do is you're able to go into Pronetta, which is a good like Siemens software to use, to be honest with you. And then you can actually just right click and set your network parameters and you could do a bunch of different things, reset the factory again, uh, open the web browser, start flashing LEDs, a bunch of different stuff. So as you can see here, I've got my um, PC and it's going to an unmanaged switch, and then I've got my two PLCs there. So that's how I solved my duplicate IP issue. Next, if we go to devices and networks, what you've got to do is, the there should be an option, if your PLC can do this, at least one of them, I believe, needs to have, so when you click on the network, the ethernet port of either controller, you can see here my settings, Look, take, take a look down here at my settings, this is my old PLC, the 12, the 1211C, and the new one. The new one has less settings. So what it's missing is it's missing time synchronization. Actually, it's not. It's just pushing that a bit lower, isn't it? Just go to advanced. Uh, yeah, okay. So time synchronization is down there. 
And then, so this one doesn't have web access, like this one does, and it doesn't have operating mode. So that operating mode is what you need to be able to get this communication working. This is at least the one way that I found on how to do it. So you go to operating mode on my old PLC, the 1211C. And then what I did was I set that to IO device and then I assign it to the IO controller. So these are grayed out right now because I'm online. I could go offline. So this wasn't ticked. I ticked this IO device and then I, I then set my network, which is this prof, uh, PLC.2 Profinet IO system. Come back to here. And then the tricky part now is setting up a transfer area. So you need to tell it what information it should, it should be transferring. So what I've done was I've said, okay, take the Q100 output on this PLC here. So take it and send it to the I device, which is this device, and send it to input two. So if I go onto this PLC, PLC two, and I go to my tags, so we're looking for Q100, there you go. So Q100 is there, I can monitor that if I want. So that's currently set to true. If I cross-reference it, you can see where it's used. So what I did was I made a block called IO communication. And so here, what I've done is I've sent my normal e-stop input, which is just input 0 0.1, and I've sent that input to an output, Q100. Obviously my I, my 1214 doesn't have 100 outputs, but you can still reference and use outputs you don't physically have. So I've sent that to Q100 and I've specified that here in my, so on my ethernet port operating mode, I've specified send that address Q100 and send it to input two on this PLC. So now if I go to PLC one, show all my tags, and then now I've got input 2.0, which I've just left as tag one, cross-reference that, see where it's used, it's used in main. And so now I'm saying, okay, when we don't have that input 2.0, 2.0, then trigger output Q0.1. So output Q0.1 is just my buzzer. Sorry, Q0.0 is just my buzzer. So when I don't have input two, so now if I lose that, you can see there, I've, I've lost my signal for my e-stop. And then now you can see this is on the second PLC now that it is now triggering that output tag Q0.0. And that's it. Literally, it's as simple as that, which is, is nuts really. So I'm guessing if I wanted to send a bunch more, which, I'm, which I may well try to do, I'm just using an IO communication block to just, you know, basically take. So all I'm really doing is I'm making a, a dummy output here on my main plc my 1214c and then i'm using i'm setting up on here under the operating mode and then under i device communication transfer area and then setting up here so I'm, I'm assuming if i wanted to transfer more and more tags i'd have to just manually create them i was hoping there would be a better way whereby i can just view everything in there and if there is please let me know but to be honest this isn't too bad i don't mind doing this and it kind of makes sense uh, to me, you know, this, this is quite, I, f I find this to be quite clean, but if you have a cleaner way of doing it, please let me know. Yeah, man, you know, one of you guys suggested to me when I was talking, when I'm trashing this PLC, one of you guys suggested to me, what, no, no, don't get rid of it, keep it and use it to learn. And I'm very grateful for you, you for suggesting that. So please, if you have any suggestions, comments, you know, anything I'm learning here and I really want to learn. So I'm all is, honestly. You know, someone suggested me to change the e-stop wiring. I did, and that works very well now. You know, as you can see there, my input's always on and then you lose it. Just makes sense. Like if that wire breaks, I'll lose that input so I know something's wrong with it. Yeah, honestly, guys, thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next video. I don't even know what I'm doing next. What should I do next? Yeah, leave a comment. Let me know what to do next. Modbus, I heard apparently Modbus is something. I still haven't figured out what that is, but I wouldn't mind doing some Modbus stuff. So yeah, whatever Modbus is, if you can <laughs> let me know how I could Modbus this. <laughs> I'll do it. Cool, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.